This episode has been brought to you in part by Canderell and Kingset Capital. Coming soon, affordable luxury condominium living at 908 St. Clair West. Nestled into a vibrant, one-of-a-kind neighborhood, 908 St. Clair West is a modern treasure, offering a sophisticated lifestyle inspired by St. Clair Village and prestigious Forest Hill. Register today at 908stclairwest.com. Here I am at the edge of the Mikva. I am not at the end of the path, but at the crossroads, and I must make the choice that will determine who I am and where I will stand tomorrow. <sighs> this shouldn't be that hard. To do or not to do? That's the question, right? This should be That's easy. the sound at the So New Festival from Winnipeg's Jewish Theatre last year. And that was the first reading of a new play called Precipice. The author is Primrose Medeignazen. She wrote it to describe the journey of a Filipino woman converting to Judaism and navigating between the two cultures. It's a familiar theme. The Winnipegger did something like that herself nearly 20 years ago when she met and later married her husband, who was Jewish. Precipice has just won first prize in this year's Canadian Jewish Playwriting Competition. The author is no stranger to exploring the themes of identity and Canadian and Jewish diversity through her art. Her newest book for young readers is called Lessons in Fusion, about what it's like to grow up during the pandemic as a minority in a minority, a mixed-race Jewish Filipino girl in a community where there aren't many others like them. I specifically wrote the novel so that my son would want, would want to read again. And I wanted him to find a story about himself that he could relate to. And that was my biggest ac accomplishment, to find something he would read. And now, hopefully, for other people to read. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Thursday, February the 24th, 2022. Welcome to the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. <music> Primrose Medeignazen's new play beat out 20 others to win the Jewish playwriting competition. The judges come from the Siegel Centre in Montreal, Winnipeg's Jewish Theatre, the Neptune in Halifax, and the Harold Green in Toronto. For coming first, she gets a cash prize, but more importantly, she gets sessions with the dramaturge and other theatre people, including some actors, to actually workshop the play on stage and present it at the Miles Nadal JCC in Toronto later this year. Mede Ignazen's parents immigrated to Canada in the 1970s. She was born in Manitoba. She's written other pieces for the theatre before. She's also a well-known food blogger in Winnipeg, and she's got a day job with the federal government. Coming up, Mede Ignazen will be here to explain why she wanted her sons to have books and theatre that they can relate to. But first, here's what's making news elsewhere in Canada right now. I'm Barbara Perry at Ontario Tech University, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like. As the city of Ottawa recovers from three weeks of turmoil under the recent truckers' convoy protests, here's a story that couldn't have come at a better time. A local Jewish group in Ottawa has launched a week-long challenge to spread a little kindness. They're asking people to pay a nice compliment to somebody, a sincere compliment, and then challenge others to do the same. They've got a little video lesson on how to do it properly. It's called Compliments 101, and we'll play some of it for you at the end of the show. The Compliments Challenge comes as Canada marks its first ever National Kindness Week. Parliament adopted the law last year in honor of the late Ottawa rabbi, Reuven Bolka. Primrose Medeignazen joins me now from her home in Winnipeg. Well, it's great to meet you and congratulations for winning the Canadian Jewish Playwriting Competition uh, Award. Amazing. Thank you so much. Was it a surprise? Well, I don't assume I'm going to win <laughs> anything. I, I always, I hope, I always hope. And um, so many people had told me that it was such a good play uh, and that because of the subject matter of being uh, Filipino and Jewish, it's a story that you don't see very often that I had a good chance of winning. That's what people have told me. I had looked over previous winners and I knew I was, I, I would be in uh, with a good company if I was a winner. So I, I was, I'm just very honored to have been selected. Tell us a little, a no, 30 second blurb about what it is. And I have a quick question about it. So first you go ahead. Uh, this play is about the journey of a Filipino woman who converts to Judaism. 
And this journey takes her from her in-laws, her future in-laws Seder table to a synagogue in the Philippines. And she uses ceremony and the beautiful symbolism in Judaism to bridge the, her fractured family. I don't know if our listeners will be aware that there are synagogues in the Philippines. Um, so is there a Jewish community in the Philippines? Um, what, did you, what did you know about it when you started writing this? Well, what had happened was that when, uh, when I met my husband, we fell in love and I decided, and he proposed, then I decided to look into converting. Uh, when I met with, my, with the rabbi, his rabbi at the time, which was Rabbi Green at Sherazetic Synagogue, He had told me something that really started to pique my interest in Judaism is that he lived in the Philippines for a while at a synagogue. Uh, He he was practicing at a synagogue and uh, he he and his group were part of the people power movement, which was a peaceful protest against the Marcos regime in the Philippines. And he told me about that and about how Judaism, how important peace was and to confront conflict through nonviolent means. And I, and I started to look into it then, and I, and I thought that was very interesting. And several years ago, we had, me and my husband had watched a documentary at the Rady Center in Winnipeg uh, that talked about the Jewish community had, that had come to the Philippines because the Philippines was one of the few countries that was accepting refugees um, uh, during World War II. And so I started to become more interested about how did Jews end up in the Philippines in their story? And part of that is, is in this play. And so Ashkenazi Jews, right? Ashkenazi Jews, yes. Have you been back to the Philippines since uh, you converted to Judaism and, and, and took on you know, this life? No, no, not yet. That's a goal someday. But going back to the play, um, there's family estrangement how different is a Filipino family, Filipino family than a Jewish family in terms of inter-family sibling problems, all that stuff? I think with almost all families, it's very similar, but there's this big emphasis on uh, the parents putting all their hopes and dreams in their children, which is a huge part of Judaism, a huge part of, of the Filipino culture, the idea of legacy. Um, I remember it was very important for my husband, he wanted Jewish children. Uh, that that was important to him, and as many and so many other Jewish families, they want to continue that lineage and continue that line, and that is important in the Filipino culture as well. And I found that that is so similar, and it is addressed in the play. It's a big part of the play about this idea of carrying on for the future, not just culture, but also religion and blood. So it might be quite, it must have been quite the navigation for you to join a Jewish family and convert and also have to, you know, explain it to your own family. I chose to become Jewish. Also, not only it wasn't to, to marry him. And so that was to make his family, to make his family happy. I fell in love with Judaism, fell in love with the ceremony and fell in love with the symbolism and the way it made me feel. Um, I grew up Catholic, um, and I left the Catholic Church um, for many, many reasons once I was a teenager, um, and, and, and not to, to disparage any other Catholics. It just didn't work for me anymore. But when I found Judaism again, I realized I loved the idea of the symbolism and the whole idea of choosing how to worship and putting spirituality in everything you do from simple of of how you wake up in the morning and and how you eat how symbolism is just ingrained in all of that and this play is a love letter to the ceremony and symbolism of judaism you know you're writing not just this play but in your new novel which came out in the fall there's a lot of themes that um are very contemporary and young people are struggling with them. Racism, not just young people, racism and skin tone and religion, of course, and body image. Are you basically taking things that you see in your own family life? Uh, You know, where does the inspiration for these themes come from? For me, it's important to get these stories out there, especially 
uh, the Filipino Judaism just juxtaposition. I've been writing about that more because I want my children to have something to look forward to in the future for them to look back on and say, that's me. I see something in writing and in art that is me. Um, and even through social media, when I talked about my writing, about talking about the Jewish and Filipino stories, other people have actually reached out to me and said, I never thought anyone had this experience. I thought it was just me and they feel less alone. So I'm just really happy to have these stories out there, not just for the Jewish Filipino audience, but for the Jewish audience and the Filipino audience to maybe look at these stories and say to themselves, you know, we're not that different and we can bridge these gaps. Well, I mean, talking about for your children, what they have to identify that someone looks like them and feels like them, not only uh, do they have a challenge of being um, visible minority, but of course, the anti-Jewishness, anti-Semitism. How, how have they confronted that? How, what are the challenges that they are seeing in their lives at the moment? The way I've raised my children is for them to be incredibly proud of who they are. I wanted them to always see both sides of themselves. Uh, in a recent uh, conversation I had with my son, we talked about how uh, my, my oldest son, Jericho, about how he would go to synagogue one day on Saturday. He'd go to synagogue on Saturdays and on Sundays he'd go to Filipino folk dance. And he felt how, how what a wonderful way to show both sides of him and to explore both sides of him. I've always told my children the best way to fight anti-Semitism, the best way to fight racism and any kind of hate is pride. Be proud of who you are because they can, no one can take that away. But your kids were raised 100% Jewish, right? Correct. They go to Jewish schools. My uh, older son had his bar mitzvah last year. Describe yourself as a Jewish mother. I, <laughs> that's a great question. As a Jewish mother, I am one of those mothers that will do anything for their children. Uh, and I will sacrifice uh, my time, my sleep, and I will prioritize them first. I just want to make sure that they're taken care of. And most of all, I want to make sure that they can be the best that they can, they can, which is why I instill such a strong sense of pride in them. And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this week and this episode of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Integrity, community, quality, and customer care. Today's listener shout-out goes to Robbie Babbins Wagner in Calgary. You know the Jewish world is really small because I met her on a Mediterranean cruise way before the pandemic. And last week's show about the magicians, Jonah Babbins is her nephew. And we'll end today's show with this bit from Ottawa volunteer Susie Shore Sove explaining how you can pay a compliment properly on Kindness Week. Pull out of your mind and place in your mouth all the goodness you perceive in your friend by letting them know that you value and appreciate their specific virtuous qualities. Sincerely compliment an attribute you admire rather than patronizing with general gush. Let the other know what they did, when they did it, and why and how you were affected positively by their behavior. 